Do you welcome this idea? Oh, this is uh, absolutely wonderful. Uh, this is provide broadband tax relief to all British Columbians. We need to remember that we pay PST on nearly everything we purchase within the province, ex except for groceries. So if you're out shopping, what's in your cart? If it's not food, you're most likely paying PST on it. So you're paying PST on little things like toilet paper and paper towels and all of your cleaning supplies and big ticket items like new cars. And what's interesting is that not only do you pay PST on new cars, you pay PST on used cars, no matter how many times they've been sold. So this is really a tax quite often on people who are struggling to get by, who live paycheck to paycheck, and are just working class families. Because most of the people I know will buy a used car, but you're still dinged PST. And on top of that, you actually have to pay PST on everyday items like hardware, tools, building supplies, construction equipment. And so that actually winds up adding thousands of dollars to the cost of a house in British Columbia. And even if you're really thrifty and you're trying to save money and you want to buy a mobile home or a modular home, you pay PST on top of that too. So this is a really bold move. This would save taxpayers millions and millions of dollars. And so what we really like about it is that it's not a boutique tax credit. It is not just going after left-handed joggers on Sundays. This is going after everybody and giving them some tax relief. So we're very pleased to see this. So much so, we hope the NDP and the Greens both belly up to the bar and match this pledge. Wow, that was just awesome. <laughs> well, we believe it. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of the economic purists out there will say things like, this is not the best tax to cut, but what would you say about that? academia with their economics degrees, yeah, they're really smart and their graphs are awesome and in theory, they often will say things like, we like consumption taxes, but in the real world, people don't like taxes. And in the real world, this is a tax on nearly everything. Like, there's PST on soap. There is PST on clothing, on shoes, on used clothing and shoes on furniture, on pretty much everything. And so while the economists in their university halls will say, well, technically, no. Technically, this actually, in reality and in practice, is a big tax cut for average working people. So I, I fully respect their degrees and their expertise and their analysis, but when it comes right down to the ground and it's commuter families who are working and trying to make ends meet, this is a big popular tax cut for a reason. It's popular for a reason, because people want to save money. <laughs> Did you think this will be an election game changer? Yes, I do. Uh, the very fact that this is coming from the BC Liberals, to me, is a bit of a tone change. And to me, I think this now puts the ball in John Horgan's court. John Horgan grew up a working person. He drove trucks. He worked in pulp mills. A lot of his original support comes from working class people. And so I think this will itch. And he'll say, oh, that's probably a good idea. And we earnestly think so. This is something the NDP could say, you know what? We're not going to get rid of it for one year. We're going to get rid of it for two years. That would really be something. And again, this would benefit all walks of life and all classes of people both people who have a, still a decent income after all of this mess after COVID and those who are currently struggling. And it's especially those who are currently struggling. If you're, if you're working paycheck to paycheck, what that means is all of the money you earn is out there. It's in bills, it's in goods, it's in services. Stuff has been spoken for and paid for. And most of that has PST on it. So this, by that rule, is affected by that. You even pay PST on your natural gas for your home. Um, restaurant owners pay PST on their hydro bills. Business owners do. And if you work as a home-based business and you're registered, you pay PST on that hydro bill too. So this isn't some you know luxury tax. This is a tax on nearly everything. 
what I found interesting is that the BC Liberals made sure to carve out luxury vehicles. So if you have some vehicle that costs more than hundred grand, and I literally don't know what those would be, I don't know, like a Lamborghini or something, um, that doesn't apply here. They're not allowing you to take your PST off that. But on your Toyota Tracel, you can take the PST off, and that's significant. Well, that's interesting. Now, let's say there was a game of dueling banjos and the NDP <laughs> was competing with them for tax cuts. Now, what would happen? I mean, you don't want to steal the Liberals' ideas, but what what could the NDP conceivably in a battle of tax cut election proposal, what kind of things are open to them for options if they wanted to go that way? Great question. So they could match or beat the BC Liberals on the CST thing. And or they could scrap the BC carbon tax. When John Horgan was in opposition back in 2008 and they were forcing, by they I mean the BC Liberals, were forcing the BC carbon tax through, he railed against it. He said the BC carbon tax would be too difficult for people to drive their kids around and to drive to work and to heat their homes in the winter. And he was right then. Back then, back then, Carol James was the leader of the NDP. She called the B.C. carbon tax lipstick on a pig. That's what she called it. Now she's the finance minister, and now they still have the B.C. carbon tax. It's already $40 a ton. It's no longer even called revenue neutral, and the emissions are going up, up. They're not going down. We have the highest carbon tax in all of Canada, so it's not working. They told us it would make emissions go down. It's not working. So I actually think that this would really appeal to their average working class voter base. Those moms and dads who are busy commuting, those ones who voted them in when they got rid of the tolls on the bridges, that's a big deal. And so they could definitely play that card. If they said, turned around and said, you know what? We've tried this since 2008. It's not working. It's costing us more than a billion dollars a year for taxpayers. We're getting rid of it. That would be upping the ante. Wow, that was just awesome. It can't get any more awesome than this, so I'm not even going to ask anymore. <laughs>